stream is starting. It says I'm live, but it also is not showing any video. Oh, here we go. Jeez Louise. All right, so I'm gonna get started. This is an HTML tutorial that I'm doing. I love writing code and HTML is a big part of that because um, one of my favorite languages to program in is JavaScript and the easiest way to get started in JavaScript is with a web page of some kind, whether it's a local one or if you're hosting it online, doesn't matter. Um, and one of the reasons I like doing it locally is because you can get started really quickly, really easily, right away um, with tools that come pre-installed on your computer. And you really can't say that about too many other programming languages unless you're on like Linux or something crazy and you intend to start learning something difficult. So um, I feel like the ease of getting started is really kind of the appeal of HTML and JavaScript and all of that. Um, but today, uh, right now, this stream is just sort of an introduction to HTML, mostly with the intention of helping people get started with JavaScript programming. There may be more tutorials to come, but as of right now, I just wanted to try to do a stream that wouldn't last too long. Um, I'm gonna, it's going to be a saved video that people can watch later. Um, if they ever open up the ability or if I ever figure out how to trim off the first little bit of the stream or I embarrass myself, that'd be great. But if not, it's just going to be part of the video. So here we go. We're going to get started. And we're going to start with the basic concept of HTML and its tag system. I think that one thing that a lot of people struggle with when getting started with HTML is putting the tags in properly, understanding how they're structured and how they relate to each other and when to open and when to close and they forget to close all the time. And I've, I've tried teaching several people, some successfully, some less so, and it seems like everyone struggles with the same things in the beginning. So to start off, we're going to talk about HTML tags. So if you haven't seen HTML tags, they are inside of brackets. Um, these are greater than and less than symbols. We don't call them that. Um, when we're programming HTML, we call them brackets and or braces. Uh, although braces are typically the little curly guys there and those are used more in JavaScript and a few other programming languages. Um, brackets can also be the, the more squared brackets, the straight ones. Um, they're also used in programming languages not so much in HTML. Same with the parentheses. They can be used in many programming languages, um, but not so much in HTML. HTML uses primarily these um, sometimes called carrots, sometimes brackets. And basically, you put text inside of some kind, and that is a tag. Now, this is not a valid tag for many reasons, especially with the latest specification, but that's what a basic tag looks like. And there are two different types of tags for the most part. There are tags that are self-contained like this, and then there are tags that um, require that you open and close the tag. And then something usually will go inside, either more HTML or just some words, just something will go inside. Um, those particular tags are the source of the most confusion and difficulty. Most people get the idea of putting an object in or putting something in or doing something with a standalone tag like this. A lot of people struggle with the open and close tags. So first let's set a few things straight. HTML is not fully a programming language. I guess there's some um, arguments for calling it a programming language. It's not Turing complete, complete from what I understand, which effectively just means that you really can't do anything terribly interesting with it. It's a formatting language. And in fact, 
um, HTML stands for hypertext. Well, it's the capital T. Um, and I mean, I guess it's modeling language or markup language. Um, I always heard it markup language. Someone said it was modeling language. I don't know if they're right. I'm not going to bother looking it up. It's a markup language. It's basically for taking plain text that has no features at all and adding features in. Um, so an example, this is some normal text. Um, let's make one word bold. So say we wanted to make the, the word bold, bold. Now this is antiquated HTML. We're just doing some very quick, a, a small example here. You would put it inside of B tags. Um, that particular tag is depreciated now. There's another one that's replaced it, but that would make it bold. And I'm just showing off that if you were in Microsoft Word and you wanted to make it bold, you would highlight it and then there'd be a bold option. We're doing plain text editing. This is Notepad, this is not Word. You can't format text. And when you put it into a web browser, if you can't format the text in, a, in the original file, how do you format it? How do we make things bold? How, we, how do we make things italic? How do we make things go into a new line? The fact is that HTML also um, ignores what's called white space, things like returns, um, multiple spaces. You can't indent by, indent by doing a bunch of spaces or by doing a tab. The web browser, the HTML parser, the interpreter ignores all of that. So in order to format text, in order to make text look interesting, do interesting things, um, and not just text in order to add images, in order to add all kinds of things, you need a markup language. You need, you need some way of saying, okay, this word right here is going to be bold, and that bold is going to stop there. So this is your open tag, this is your close tag. Anything inside of it is getting the effect of that tag or it's contained within that tag and that's what i like to think of tags as their containers and that's where a lot of people get tripped up with html is how do i organize those open and close tags so i came up with a visual before we start doing any real coding i came up with a visual that i want to share um, because basically the tags can be thought of as containers and the HTML view of them, the, the actual tags that you, that you write can be thought of as the intersection of those containers in one dimension. That's kind of a confusing way to describe it, so we're gonna draw a picture. So let's say we've got some containers. I'm just gonna be doing a 2D drawing, so each container is going to be represented by a circle. Now here's a big container. This one represents the most high level the first tag that you write in html and that is actually the html tag so we're going to kind of label this one h t m l i really need to get like a writing tablet if i'm going to be doing a lot of this but that's our html tag um, now let's uh let's look at what how html is formatted it's got two parts it's got the head area where you put things that don't render on the screen and then oh I forgot you can do that after the fact and then you've got the body area where you put things that do render on the screen all right um, let's see how do we get that to there we go so inside of that body we can put things let's put a um, paragraph tag so we'll put just one paragraph on our page and then let's add in um, maybe some text and we don't need to represent the text as a container because the text goes inside of the container maybe we'll do something to represent it but for now let's make some text inside of that um, whoa let's make it um, we'll make some of the text bold and we'll make some of the text um, italic and we'll make some of the text um, bold and italic. So what that would look like is we'll make it bold first. So we've got a container for things that are bold and then we're going to have a container for things 
that are italic. And that's going to be all of the same text. So here's our, our HTML containers. So again, we've got our, um, oh, that's not going to work terribly well. We've got our head here. We've got our body here. Everything that renders on screen goes in the body. This is just a basic HTML um, file. They all look like this. They all are structured like this um, as far as those three elements go. And then we can do whatever we want. This is a paragraph. And I'm just, since I don't have a pen, we're just going to do the paragraph symbol. This is a paragraph. And here is, what did we say? This one's bold. This one's italic. And this one's bold and italic and italic and maybe we'll use the real terms that current html uses and that is um, strong so this is strong text it's given strong importance and this one is emphasized which is shortened to em so italic is now called em for emphasize and bold is now called strong for strong so this is going to be both of them. All right, so now let's look at what I was explaining before when I said, okay, we're going to think of this as nothing more than the intersection along one dimension with all of these containers. So let's draw our line, the one dimensional line through all the containers. And now one by one, we're going to write a tag for them. And that's going to be our at our first intersection here right here is our first HTML tag. And then there's a closing HTML tag at the end, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to go from left to right. Normally, as soon as you open a tag, it's a great habit to just go ahead and close it. But for this demonstration, I'm not going to do that. So there's our HTML tag. All right, now we're moving from left to right. We get to our head tag. We didn't put anything inside the head. There's usually a lot inside of the head or maybe a little depending on what you're doing, but here's our head tag, okay? Since we didn't put anything in there, we're gonna go ahead and close the head tag. Here is the beginning of our body tag. We can trace that out and see, oh, there's the body tag. So there we go, body. Here is the beginning of our paragraph tag. The paragraph tag is simple, it's just a P for paragraph. Here's the beginning of our first strong tag. We had some text in here. I forgot to illustrate that somehow. Let's just say here is bold um, italic, which I can never spell right, um, slanted <laughs> text, um, and both kinds. All right, so there's our, our text. We've got to add in our bold. So. Again, moving left to right, here's the text that says here is, and then we get to, we want to insert the formatting for bold, which is strong. And we're just going to, moving left to right, we've got our closing strong tag. So right here, we're going to end strong. And then we're moving left to right, we get to our EM tag. That's our italic or slanted. And then we are moving left to right, the word slant is inside of that container. Now we close EM, and then we move left to right. We get to our bold tag here. Um, that's gonna be for both. So we do strong. And then you can see that right away before we have our contents inside the container, we're gonna put in our EM, um, the italic. I should have used the same colors to make it clear. Hindsight is 2020, right? So there we are, we've got up to here, we've done this tag here, which is an EM tag for italic. We move around and we find, now we close our EM tag next after our content. So we close that and then we get here and we close our strong tag, which was the other green one there. And now we're just wrapping things up. After the end of our text here, the paragraph container, let's go ahead and close that up. This red one is our body tag. We're gonna close that one. And this black one is our main HTML tag. So there we go. That's a complete web page document. We're missing, you know, we could put a lot of information in the head, but we didn't. Um, 
Now here's the thing, remember I said that white space doesn't matter in HTML. You do not want a long complicated web page on one line. You can do it that way. HTML, um, the interpreter, does not care where you put returns. I can put a return right there and it'll pretty much render the same. Um, I think that return might be interpreted as a space in that case, so you might get a little weird spacing there, but I could certainly put a return here or between these tags. And so what we do is we use returns um, and even tabs, because tabs are also ignored as, as being white space, we use returns, spaces, and tabs to organize visually the information. So moving from left to right, we've got our head, uh, I mean our HTML open, head open, head close, body open, we've got our paragraph and all of the contents inside of there. Moving left to right, we've inserted a tag. Every location I can draw lines and say here's the head and Here's the close, here's our paragraph, I mean our um, our body, let's make that line a little bit more uh, accurate. Here's our paragraph, here's the strong, the first strong tag, there's the second strong closing tab, here's our EM and, and so forth. I mean we, we get off the screen a little bit, but you can see that each one matches up with how our line, the one dimensional line, intersected with our containers. I hope that this visual can help people understand why it's so important to open and close your tag immediately when you make it and then insert your content. And that content can be more HTML, like in this case. We've got over here our strong EM and then our EM and then our strong. You notice that it opens and the the closing is on the outside. The, the, the EM is completely contained within the strong container. Some people, a common mistake, will be to switch them, to do strong open, EM open, and then strong close, and then EM close. That's wrong. You, you can do it. The HTML interpreter is pretty forgiving, and it won't penalize or punish you most of the time for doing that, but occasionally that's going to confuse it, and it's going to confuse you, and it's going to cause problems, especially when it's not so straightforward as this example. So make sure you're thinking about the tags, the, the ones that open and close, as being containers. Even if they don't do something that a container does in your mind, you've got to have that concept in your head. So let's go ahead and format this one out like, like people would normally format it. Um, most of the time, these are going to be on different lines. Um, we can keep our paragraph on one line, although that could get broken up. And there we go. That is kind of a, a common way to see it presented, especially, um, I mean, this is kind of a big bold font here or a big font here, so it's it, it still goes off the screen a little ways, but your paragraphs can be one line. You can break them up. Again, the, the white space just does not matter. Um, another thing that people will often do is each container, so here's our container drawing, each container that is inside of something else gets a certain number of tabs depending on what level inside. So here's level zero, this is the outside, and we'll go back to black so it shows up a little. This is level zero, here's level one, this one's at the same level, it's just another container inside of zero, but here's a level two, and here's a level three, and these are all level three, except for this yellow one, which is now a level four, because it's inside of another one. So some people will use that to tab in, so our head gets one tab each, the body, and we'll go ahead and add it in for everything inside the body, um, but the things inside the body get another tab in, and then here our content will get an extra tab just to distinguish it and say, okay, just like the paragraph is tabbed in when it's inside the body, our content is tabbed in because it's inside the paragraph. And then if we wanted to be multi-line with these guys over here, we could. Generally with HTML, I don't take the time to tab in like this. Um, I do see it done this way a lot, so it's really more of if you're new to it and you're exploring it and you're having troubles keeping track of where things are nested, um, especially when, let's let's go ahead and add in a common tag inside of the head, which is the title. That's your page title. Um, again, head things do not um, render up in the screen, and we'll be looking at this in just a moment. Um, head 
stuff tends to be stuff that's a little bit more behind the scenes. But we would put our title and say, my first web page. And we close that title tab as or tag as well because it's a container. It contains text and we want to make sure that we open and close it. Probably a smarter way, especially if you're learning, is to type title, close title, and then re relocate your cursor inside so that you can type your content. Um, first web page. So open and close immediately. Think of them in pairs, think of them as needing to be next to each other, and then if we're going to put something else inside of them, even if it's more code, we go ahead and add that in as a separate content to that container. Um, we'll see why that's extremely important in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and just think about one more thing, and for the modern standard of HTML, it's very important that you let your HTML parser, which is really at another level, and I'm not a full stack web developer, I'm not super well trained in all of this. As I understand it, the first thing that views content is not your HTML parser, because the web browser sees a lot more than just HTML. So the very first thing looking at the content is gonna want some sort of notification of what it's looking at, because it could be a PHP web um, page, it could be, um, you know, some sort of video file. It could be any number of things. So we're going to let it know when it opens up this file that it's looking at a doc type that is HTML. So that's got to be your first line. Um, some of the modern web browsers like Chrome, if you don't put that in there, it's not detrimental. It doesn't break everything. But for example, in um, Internet Explorer or Edge, I believe as well, but Internet Explorer, if you don't have that line in there, any HTML5 features that you put in will be ignored. They don't execute properly. So you want to make sure that that line is in there so that anything that you do is properly interpreted. That just sort of puts the interpreter into the proper mode to say, okay, this is an HTML5 document. There are certain standards that it's going to be upholding and I can expect those standards to be followed. Therefore, I can render things properly. So that's going to be what we're going to type out. We're going to be redoing this we're not going to save this. If you were following along, I'm sorry, you just erased a bunch of content. Um, let's create a folder. Um, we'll just say learning HTML. And inside of that folder now, um, we're just going to check something. This is Windows 10. In order to properly create and edit web pages on your computer, you need to make sure that you go to the View tab and that file name extensions is checked. The other way to get there is to go to your folder options, which in Windows 7 and Windows 8, I believe um, you just can hit the Alt button inside of your folder there, and there will be a little menu, and somewhere in there you'll find folder options. On the folder options, you go to View, and it's going to have a check mark here next to Hide Extensions for Known File Types. You want to make sure that's not checked, and then hit Apply or OK or however you like to do it. You don't want to cancel. In this case, I'm just going to close that out because it's already set up properly. And now we can go to new text document. And we're actually just gonna delete everything in there because we're gonna be typing a new extension. We do not want the .txt extension because that's a text file and we want an HTML file. So we're gonna type um, web page, we'll do underscore page. Um, dot htm. Now I prefer the three letter extension because most extensions are three letters. You can also do HTML. Some people like that because that's the complete acronym and a lot of um, extensions are frankly four or more letters. I've seen long, long ones before that just kind of shocked me. But I started doing this back in the day of three letter extensions being the norm and almost a standard and I prefer the three letter extension. So we're going to do htm. Um, and yeah, at that point you just hit enter and it says that you're changing the file extension name. It knew that it was a text file. You're changing it. It's going to say that might make it unusable or, you know, you're, you're, you could be breaking it. Are you sure? We're going to say yes. We are sure. We know what we're doing. We're professionals here. So here's our webpage.htm. Now you'll notice that it automatically knows that this can be opened with a web browser. Um, some office type products are configured to also work with web pages. Um, here's another web browser, Visual Studio will edit it, and Notepad. I prefer Notepad. Um, 
So if you're not finding web browsers and notepad here, go to choose another app or choose another program or something and look in the list. If you're not seeing it, there's a more options list. There may be a drop down menu, a little circle with an arrow in it that you need to click if you're in another version of Windows, but you'll just find the application that you want to use to, to uh, edit it in your list and you don't need to check that always open button because I'm pretty sure once you do that once it should show up in your open with list the next time. Um, and really most of the time we're just going to be going to the open with list. If you want to set it so that the default open opens it in your web browser or a notepad, however you want to do it, totally up to you. I'm just going to continue using this. So let's open it in Chrome first and see that I've got a live stream going and that our web page is blank. And up here it just has the file name and there's no content in the window. Good start. Um, let's edit it. So we'll go to, I have Notepad++. You don't have to use that. I don't even like it for all web editing. It's, it's a very good editor. Highly recommend testing it out and trying it out. But um, Notepad is more than sufficient for 99.9% .9 of what I do. Um, I don't always use the features in the uh, in Notepad++, so I find that I prefer just regular old Notepad. So let's add in our whoa, scroll lock. How did I hit that? Doc type HTML. So we've got that in there. Internet Explorer won't freak out. Um, all of the other web browsers will just be really glad that we've got it in there. I guess it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable with the document. Now, um, the overarching container, if we go back to our reference graphic, is the HTML tag. We've got it there at the front and at the back. So let's add that in, um, HTML and HTML. Now I should mention, if, if you're curious, the tags do not have to be lowercase or uppercase. Some people will make all of the tag names uppercase so that when they're putting in what are called attributes here, they can make them lowercase and it's very clear that they're dealing with the tag name versus the attributes. I do it all lowercase, um, except that I like to capitalize this one because I like the way it looks. I have no better reason than that. Um, I've also seen doc type capitalized and HTML lowercase. Totally, I think, a matter of preference since it's not case sensitive. Um, so there's our HTML tags. Next on our list, we've got the head and the body. I like to create both of them at the same time. So we'll make our head, we'll close our head, we'll make our body, and I like to have an extra space in there since I know that I'll be putting things in there. And we can put the extra space there as well. And you notice I opened and closed, and I'm still treating them like full containers. I made the HTML first, and then I'm putting things inside of it. And then I'm leaving some space to put things inside of these guys. Let's add a title in first, and we'll just real quick go over to our web browser and check and see what that does. So open and close our title container tags, and um, we'll just say uh, web page demo. So let's save. I like to do control S. If you're addicted to the mouse, go to the file, save. You can see all of your little keyboard commands there. Since you're doing a lot of typing, it's a good idea to learn the keyboard commands so you can take your hand off the keyboard as little as possible. The mouse will only slow you down. It's inaccurate sometimes. It can cause problems. I do use it a lot, but you can potentially do everything with the keyboard if you learn the commands. Alt-Tab is a good way to move around between things that are open. You can hold down the Alt and, and hit Tab to move between different things. Um, but we'll just click back here and we'll refresh. And now you notice that where we had just the file name, it now says web page demo. That is what the title tag controls is that title. There's a way to control this little icon here. Um, there are other things that can be controlled here, including putting in search terms for search engine optimization, which is kind of something that is getting less important as I understand it. I don't know, I'm not the expert. I've never tried to optimize my search engine results because I don't care if people notice me. So we've got our head, we've got a single container inside of that and a little bit of text. Now note that bold, I mean strong, or any other formatting tab um, tag will not work in, well, as of when I learned several years ago, maybe they changed this, but this will not work. It will not make demo bold because there's only one font 
that is capable of rendering up here from what I understand. I don't think there's a way to edit that. If I'm wrong, maybe someone can correct me in the comments. I don't think you can format the text. It's just gotta be plain text up there. So we'll save that, refresh over here, and we can see that it's back to not having goofy tags up there. So don't try to format that, it won't work. There might be a way, but I don't know. You can also put things like, um, we won't be learning it in this demo, but we might do uh, a stream later for CSS. You can put style tag up here, and you can put some CSS code in there for the page. You can also put in um, link tags that are self-contained, they're not containers, and they can, um, they can be external um, items that you link to that are files that contain styles um, for CSS or files that contain script for JavaScript. Um, you can put that in the head and eh, frankly, I think you can put those in the body too. But anyway, CSS and styles are generally handled up in the head um, they can go in the body, but, and it used to be that script used to always be up in the head, but it could go in the body, and now it seems like script is almost always found in the body. Um, it just it depends on why you're writing the script. Again, the, that's all outside of the scope of this. I'm getting off track a little bit. We're just looking at HTML, but we're talking about what the head can contain. So now we're on to the body. This is where we'll put our content. You don't need to format it. You can just start typing. This is some text for my page. I'm not putting it in a paragraph tag. It's not in a container other than the body and it does show up. Um, if I wanna do anything interesting with it though, I need HTML. And just to prove my point that white space is ignored, let's go ahead and add in some weird stuff here. Um, you know, maybe like a whole bunch of spaces there and uh, it looks exactly the same. I'm gonna, I'll even prove it to you. File, save and refresh. Nothing changed. None of that white space does a darn thing to the formatting. The only way to make um, text formatted in HTML is to use HTML tags or CSS. Uh, but we're just focusing on HTML right now. So let's take out that and um, put in a paragraph and we'll say here is text in a paragraph tag. And there you go. And now you notice that the paragraph moved it down a little bit. Um, you can edit that in CSS. That's the, um, there's things like the margin and the padding inside of the, uh, the, the container. So this, is, this being a container has properties that you can manipulate using other elements of HTML and using um, CSS, which means cascading style sheet. It's just a way of adding style um, to your HTML. In fact, style is one of the attributes that can go inside of a tag. Um, you know, for the body, you used to do like a background color and you can put a color in there. Um, honestly, attributes for HTML tags are losing their um, necessity in a lot of ways because a lot of those attributes were to manipulate the way things looked. And now you do that almost exclusively with CSS. There are still some attributes that are absolutely necessary. And in fact, one of them is one of the most essential elements of HTML, it is the element that lets you add a link to another page. What would the web page or the web, uh, the internet be if you couldn't get from one place to the other without typing it up in the little address bar there? So let's make a link. We're gonna link to Google because everybody loves Google. Um, so here is a link to Google. All right, so now let's put Google inside of a container and that container is the A tag. Um, we'll open and close our A tag, we'll save it, we'll refresh it, and it didn't do anything. Why didn't it do anything? It's because this tag is completely worthless without attributes. So the most essential attribute for the A tag, the one that makes it work is called the href, the hypertext reference. Okay, and that's gonna be equals, we put it in quotes, and we type in the address that we want. So www.google.com. All right, now if I save it, you'll get that familiar blue text with the underline. You notice I hover over it, and down in the bottom it says 
that it's going to link me to google.com. I click on it and look at that. It thought that google.com was going to be some extension of the directory that I was already in. That's because this is um, the web. We're programming right now. This is not as simple as you using your address bar on the web page or on the web browser and just putting it in and it it interprets so much stuff for you. It does so much for you, you don't even realize what it's doing. What we need is to tell it that it's, um, I, I'm drawing a blank. I know what HTTP stands for, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. That's our protocol. And then, so we were on the file protocol. Now we're going to the Hypertext Transfer Protocol and we're going to go to um, you know, the colon slash slash is necessary. It's just part of the directory system. And we're going to go to this place now. It's not just some extension of the current directory or the current system that we're in. So now if I refresh it and click on it, I get google.com. That's the way that works. It's very specific. This is programming, even though it's not a full programming language with if statements and things like that. It's not, you're not gonna use it exclusively without any help um, to make a game or a, or a program, but on its own, it can be used to make some really beautiful things. Um, some really interesting stuff can be done with HTML alone. Um, the only other thing that I might wanna add is that there is another very commonly used um, attribute for the A tag called the target, which tells it where to open the, um, the web page. So we opened it in the same tab that we were in, but what if we wanted to force it to open in a new tab? Now, the targets all start with underscore. There's blank, there's new, there are actually several different ones because this it, this comes all the way back from a long time ago when there were other places that you could open web pages, believe it or not, because you could create frames inside of your page that would display web pages. They kind of, I don't know if they completely took it out or just depreciated it and said, please don't do that, but they were called iframes. Um, you used to use them every now and then to do some really interesting stuff. You just don't see them used anymore that I know of. I just sort of dropped it out of my vocabulary, out of my working tool set. I don't use iframes, but iframes are one of the reasons that Target has more than just two options. The option to open it in the same tab, the option to open it in a new tab. There's more than one. So if I'm ever lost and I can't remember, I just don't remember what all the targets are. I know it starts with an underscore. I just don't remember, does blank open it in a new tab? Does blank open it in the current tab? There's also like underscore top, and all kinds of stuff. So let's go and find out. So what you would search for is um, HTML because we're looking related to HTML and it's the A tag, we know it's the A tag and we'll say target. What are the options for the target? And even though it gets a bad rap, um, some people on Stack Overflow will completely bash W3 schools and say, oh, it's the worst place ever. It's run by the devil himself and it's not an open organization and they've got all kinds of i read there's a whole web page dedicated to why w3 school sucks i don't care it's a decent reference it's generally correct and it's really useful for learning i highly recommend it it may not be perfect but i don't know of anything more user friendly that's more perfect than this is so Here's an example, a tag. This is the page for the a tag. It's gonna tell us about the target attribute on this page. Here's an example, we've got the href, we've got the website, we've got our target, and this one says blank. But what does that do? So here's the syntax. Inside of target, you put any one of these things. These mean on the, the bars, the vertical bars mean or. So you can put one of these things in there. You can also put a frame name. Remember that's depreciated. Um, and so the options are blank, self, parent, top, and frame name. The blank opens link document in a new tab or window. Self opens it in the same frame as it was clicked. This is the default behavior. Um, parent opens it in the parent frame. Again, we're not really using frames, but if you were, that would be an important thing to know. And top opens it in the full body of the window. Now, generally, I will either do top if I want to make sure that it just definitely fills whatever, even if someone opened my page in, say someone's using frames still. I don't even know if you can in modern browsers, let's, but let's just say that they are. 
and that they opened your web page in a frame on their website. And a user is browsing your web page inside of that frame and they're displaying ads all around the edge and they're like, oh, I'm so cool, I'm stealing hits from this guy's web page. And you make your links all say top. And then when they click a link on your page, it's gonna use the full body of the window, which means you're gonna be jumping out of that frame. You could also use the parent frame, but since you don't know that you're gonna be in frames, top works best. So generally, even though self is the default, it's a good idea to specify top or blank. Blank for the new tab, top for um, just making sure that if someone's trying to hijack your, your, your viewers with ads or whatever, you're gonna exit that and leave that, uh, uh, leave that mess behind. There may be ways for them to override that and to search your page and replace any reference to um, target equals top to, to using the self target or whatever, but let's just assume that, that they're not that smart and, um, and we won't use frame names. So that's that for the A target or the uh, A link. We've got our target. We're gonna do blank so that it goes in a new window. We're gonna refresh this, click on this, and you notice it's in a new window now. Very cool. Um, the last thing we're gonna cover is the standalone tag. So far, everything we've done is a container tag. But what if we want um, a standalone tag? What if we wanted to just put a return in here? Remember, returns are ignored. So if I render this, it's still the same. I, I can save it, I can render it, and it's the same. There's no difference there. I didn't get my return. Um, there is a, a standalone tag for that, and it's called the break, and it's shortened to BR. Now, when I learned, this was perfectly acceptable. Um, there was no such thing as XML or, or XHTML or HTML5. Um, but nowadays, they're saying that every tag needs an open and a close. Well, there's no close for this one. Um, you can try it. I don't even know. I've never tried this before. Let's see what it does. And it still just does a break. What if I do it without it? What does it look like? So that, that actually put in two breaks. <laughs> so that, that, that got interpreted as a break as well. The web browser knows, the interpreter knows that you don't close a break tab. That's ridiculous. But in order to comply with the standard that everything has a close tag, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a close tag using the existing tag here. Just adding that, that extra space in that forward slash there. That creates a, a close tag just like if we did that. This tag now opens and closes. Everybody is happy. I really, oh, pardon me. No one's been able to explain to me why that was an important part of the new standard, but apparently this is correct. And as of about a week ago, I've decided that I'm always going to do that. I used to not do it, now I'm going to, because I'm gonna be a good little programmer or web developer or whatever. And you notice that that works the exact same way, whether we've got that. I'll save here so you can see me saving it or not. So we're gonna do that. And we're now going to show you one more standalone tag. And it's the, um, and again, returns don't matter. So I can put multiple returns in here just to make it easier to see where things are grouped. Let's put a P tag in, and but we're just going to put something inside of it. It's just a good idea to organize things into paragraphs. Anyway, we're just gonna put something in couple of kind of inside of it called an image. All right, now an image tag alone looks um, like nothing because we didn't give it any ar arguments. Just like the A tag, this one requires arguments in order to work properly. Um, so let's go back to our directory. We need to create an image to display. And the easiest way to display an image is to have it in the same directory as the web page. There are ways to move it into directories that are above. You know, we can create a folder here and put images in there, or we can even put the images in the previous, you know, the directory that the learning HTML folder was in or even further back. There are ways to do all of that. We're just gonna create an image here. Let's create a bitmap image. Oh, pardon me. And we're going to call it, um, you know, just a test image. Let's go ahead and open it in, um, we'll go to open with and just open it in paint. I love paint.net, but we're gonna use paint. And we're just going to make it smaller. We'll make, uh, Let's make a, a smiley face like that and we'll fill it and we'll, we'll make 
some some eyes. Wow, he's gonna look really retarded. Cool. And let's put some pupils. And we'll go ahead and fill those pupils in as well. Nice. Um, let's let's do. Let's just add insult to injury there. This might be the best smiley face I've ever done in paint. Let's add a little bit of eh, that. That was that was just stray. There we go. No, we don't need all those extra lines. All right. So there we go. That's I'm really impressed with that image. No, we don't want to do that. Plus the anti-aliasing. When did paint start doing anti-aliasing, man? Paint used to be pixel perfect. It was just great. Nothing ever blended together. It was just pixel for pixel. You could zoom in and, and never see these weird, like, look at us. We want to anti-alias. Anyway, there's our test image. That is just gorgeous. We're going to save it. And now we're going to put it in our web page. So um, the image, instead of an href to, to get a location for something, it's a source. But they shortened it to src. So the source is in the same directory, so we don't need to add anything like we did before. We can just put test.bmp. Now, web pages are compatible with all kinds of image formats, JPEG and GIF, or GIF if you're going to listen to the creator and he was crazy when he said it was pronounced GIF. I don't know. He was just doing that to troll everybody, I think, or just to make everybody angry. It's pronounced GIF. It's a graphics interchange format, not a graphics interchange format. Graphics. Since the G is pronounced G in that word, I'm going with GIF. Anyway, there we go. Oh, and we're going to be good and we're going to close that tag. That should work. Um, there are other options that you can add in. Um, but there we go. We added an image in. Um, a really important and good ta uh, attribute to put in there is the... Um, well, I can't remember what it's called now. Let's look it up. We'll go to um, HTML, image tag, and let's just look and see what they recommend for an image tag. Oh, look, the alt. That's what I was thinking of. You can specify the height and the width. CSS is really much better for that. Again, these kinds of tags are depreciated or disappearing. Um, here you go. Here's um, you can't use these attributes anymore in HTML5. Um, in HTML, the image tag has no end tag. In XHTML, which I believe HTML5 uses, it must be properly closed, which is the little extra little forward slash thing there. But anyway, we're going to use the alt text. That is an alternate text for the image. And I'll show you exactly why we use that. Um, so we're going to do alt equals um, awesome smiley face. So when we normally look at our web page like that, that's what you get um, never. Like you'll, you'll never see that. There is a way to do text that appears when you hover the, the mouse over there. But you'll never see that text unless the image breaks. So we don't have an image called s test. If I reload that, it's going to be broken. But it's going to tell you that what was intended to be there was an awesome smiley face. Another reason that might work is if the web browser attempted to download the image from the server and the server just did not deliver that image. Failed for one reason or another. So there we go. Um, the only other thing that I think I want to, at this point, the video is way longer than I wanted it to be. You can quit. You can just say, okay, that's good enough. But right now we're just going to dive very briefly into tables because tables can be quite confusing. But with our graphic understanding, I think we can make some sense of them. So let's, um, is there a way to do it? Yeah, there we go. So let's just give a quick example of a table. So we're going to skip the HTML head and body tags um, because we know that our table has got to go inside of those. Here is the uppermost, you know, the, the most important tag for your table, the thing that opens and closes the table, the thing that the container that all of the rest of the table elements are inside of, and that is the table tag. Okay, table tag. 
Now inside of the table, you can have table rows, and that's about it. I mean, there are other things, but for the most part, table rows are what you're gonna be making. So let's make table rows red, and we're gonna add, let's make this a three by three table. And we'll make it three by two. Three rows and two columns. So here's one row, here's two rows, and here's three rows, all right? The tag for a row, we'll make it black, is TR. Early HTML has a lot of shortened tags. More modern stuff tends to be more descriptive, but these are all TR tags, TR. And they are containers, so they do open and close. Um, finally, we'll make some green for the um, content holders. Even though all of these are containers, um, you don't start putting content into a table until you get to the content um, containers, which are the table documents. They're technically cells. They're the cells of the table. Um, that's what I'm looking for. But we'll just put a couple of those in each one. And inside of those, you would have your content. That content can be more HTML. Um, that content can be images. That content can be text numbers, whatever you want it to be. Um, I'll just tell you right now, it's not a good idea to put like a third one in a table where all of the rows have two. You can do it, but it comes out looking really goofy and it makes you look kind of stupid um, unless you do it really intentionally and you pull it off really slick like. There is a way to get columns to and rows to expand into each other and stuff, but that's all super advanced. We're just looking at a basic table here. So our content goes inside of here, and these table documents, or the cells, are called table documents, or TD for short. So T, D, T, D, T, D, T, D. All right, so here's your challenge. I'm gonna draw my line through this, and you are going to pause the video and use this diagram left to right to write out the code. The actual text in the table is table for the table um, tag. The actual text for the table row is TR. It contains TDs. And you'll just kind of follow this diagram going intersection by intersection, just like we did earlier. The only other thing that I want to add is that to keep track of things, we'll put numbers in each table row or you mean in each table document. So here's the number one, the number two, the number three, four, five, and six. So when you're done, you should have a table and it will look like this when you render it on the screen. You won't necessarily see the lines, but there'll be a one and a two. Those are in the same row, different cells. So they're different columns. There'll be a three and a four, and there'll be a five and a six. If you've done it correctly, you should get that without a border around it. So go ahead and pause the video. Make your table just like this. You'll put it inside of the body tags. So you'll write out your, your basic HTML um, with the duct type HTML, the HTML tag, the head tags, the title tags, the body tags, the close HTML. You'll get all of this done. And then inside of that, you will write a table and it'll look like that when you're done rendered on the page. So go ahead and pause the video, get that done. We're almost at an hour stinking long here. I did not expect it to be that long, um, but go ahead. Really pause the video and do that. All right, did you do it? So let's go ahead, let's reference our, our drawing here. Uh, maybe we'll put the drawing in the bottom and put the text on top. How do I maximize my space here? Classic problem, maximizing space. All right, good enough. So left to right, first intersection is the table tag. So let's put an extra space in here so we can see table. We're gonna be doing returns, but remember that we could just go ahead and do our next table row there um, which is the next intersection, but we're not going to. We're just, we're gonna do it like this. Um, and then we've got a table document. 
left to right. Next thing is the table document. Let's go ahead and put the one inside of that and close our table document, which is the next item that we encounter here. Then we've got a new table document. We'll put a two, close the table document. If your returns aren't in the same places as mine, that's fine as long as it rendered properly. Then the next intersection, we've opened and closed table document two. We've got a number two in it. And then we're gonna close the table row. And then we repeat just with different numbers because it's the exact same pattern. Red, green, 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 red. Red, green, 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 red. And it's red open, green open, green close, green open, green close, red close. Same pattern repeated, just with different numbers. So here we are, table row, table document, number three, end table document, table document, number four, end table document, end table row. Table row, table document, number five, end table document, table document, number six, end table document, end table row, and we're here now, the last one is end table. There we go. Let's see if that rendered properly. Save it, refresh it, and look at that. I got a one, two, three, four, five, six, just like I said I would. One, two, three, four, five, six. That does not look like a five, but it is. So there you go, guys. Um, I really hoped this would be closer to 10 minutes long, but I wanted to get into some detail and just sort of explain some things. I hope I explained it well. I hope the image helps thinking about them as containers or matryoshka dolls or nesting dolls or whatever you want to call it. And we do refer to this as nesting. Um, again, these are nested inside the table tag. Um, when you're doing other types of programming, you can nest if statements inside of each other. You can nest loops inside of each other. Nesting is an important concept in programming and in all kinds of things when it comes to design. So we are nesting these nesting dolls of containers inside of things. And the lowest level container that you've got, this is high level, this is low level, is going to have your content. And again, that content, you know, this whole table drawing could go inside of our whole HTML drawing that we did before. This would all go in the body because that's where we stuck it. We stuck it in the body. Here's the body tag. There's the table tag. Here's closed table. Here's closed body. And we could put other things on the page. We could put this table inside of something else, maybe inside of another table document. What if we put a whole table inside of that table document there? We could do it. And it would look really confusing on the screen here um, on, the, on the code, but in here, it would just look like there was a little table inside of there, depending on how we format it and everything else. So keep that in mind. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to get to them. Um, you can have my email address. Let's learn how to do a comment in HTML real quick. Um, comments are done with the exclamation point, two dashes, two dashes, and the thing, and your comment goes here. This will not render on screen. I'll prove it to you in just a second. Here's my email address, b-r-i-a-n-h-a-d-d-a-d -D 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 at gmail.com. So we'll close that. We'll refresh this. You'll notice it's not rendering on the page, but if we go to um, view page source, you can see there's my comment right there. It's even green. It's syntax highlighted to show you that that is a comment. And there's the rest of our code. And that one's gray to show us that it's not really part of all of this. It's just sort of a little notification. You notice that this one does not have, I should have pointed out earlier, it's a standalone tag, but it does not have or need that. In fact, it might break it. I don't even know. I'm not going to play with that. Don't do it. It doesn't do it. But everything else that's a standalone tag, oh, comments also, no need to do that. But everything else that's a standalone tag, images, um, form inputs, all kinds of stuff. They're standalone tags. They don't, um, they don't have a closed tag. Therefore, you will be adding in um, just that extra space and the forward slash. Geez, I could ramble on all night about this. I hope you have some fun making some HTML pages. If I do another tutorial, hopefully it'll be shorter and we can get into some CSS to learn how to manipulate um, tables and all kinds of other things using styles. So have a good night. Let me find my software here and we will stop the stream.